All right, picks and props. Danny Cannell, Leger Doosable with us here. I'm Chris Hassel, by the way. I'm just teeing these guys up. Let's go first touchdown score tonight in the Titans and Bills game. Danny? So, I like to take a little long shot every once in a while, oh, I and I was going to go Kyle Phillips, wide receiver for the Titans, but I saw he's a little bit banged up, yep. listed questionable. I'm going with the rookie, Traylon Burks. The philosophy being everybody knows Derrick Henry wants to run the ball, right? They're going to try to load up that box, yep. and when Tennessee is at their best, they dial up those shot plays. Traylon Burks, he's got the speed to do it. I'm going to say he gets one. The rookie gets the first touchdown of the night. It's a long shot, so you might want to dial it back a little bit on the investment. <laughs> I love that pick, and I was going to go a receiver too, Gabe Davis, but it seems like he potentially may not go today. It seems like he's going to be doubtful to play the game today. So I'm going to go Josh Allen. Woo, big surprise. I know. Josh <laughs> Allen, uh, the Buffalo Bills like to use quarterback run in the red zone, and even if they don't, Josh Allen with his legs, his scrambling ability, had a rushing touchdown uh, in week one versus the L.A. Rams. This is a guy that's big, right, Six foot five. Some say 240. He looks like he's about 250, 255 and runs guys over. You saw what he did to that safety, right? Uh, and stiffed on him and got him up out of there. But uh, I also like Josh Allen right here. And it is the first touchdown score in the red zone. Again, the Bills love to run the football and like quarterback run in the red zone, especially the low red. It's one thing to do it to a safety that comes up. What about he did Bobby Wagner? Like oh, carry God. him over and reach for the end zone. That might have been even more impressive. All right, so you got Allen uh, running it in for a touchdown for the first touchdown of that game. How about Vikings and Eagles first touchdown score? Similar theme. Yeah. I'm going with the quarterback in this one. <laughs> I went with a longer shot in Traylon Burks, you know, plus 2,000. I think this one's a little bit better odds to possibly get this. Jalen Hurts led the team last year in rushing. They still want him to be a big part of that uh, red zone offense, too, especially down around the goal line. He's just a versatile threat with his legs, and if he's either on a designed quarterback run or if he scrambles, it's a threat to score. So I like your odds of Jalen Hurts uh, getting that first touchdown. 100%, Danny. I'm going with Jalen Hurts as well. Last Last week, third and one, they use a quarterback run play. He gets stuffed. Fourth and one, he scrambles into the end zone. Uh, his numbers are big, right? This guy rushes the ball extremely well. He's a part of the wrestling attack, attack which was the number one wrestling attack in the NFL last year. So he's a bigger body quarterback. They like to use him in the low red, just like Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills do with him. Jalen Hurts, I think, is money for the first touchdown score for the Philadelphia Eagles. Those are first TD scores. How about an anytime touchdown score tonight? Where, where'd, the, where'd the value go, Danny? Uh, <laughs> I want to guarantee something. You tonight. got minus yeah. money on I, this? I one? know, I know, but I could very virtually guarantee that Justin Jefferson is going to get a <laughs> touchdown at some point. Yeah. He is that dominant. And I think, you know, especially wide receivers, they pay attention to who's the best receiver in the league. And I think Justin Jefferson was a little bit tired of hearing about Jamar Chase, his former teammate there mm -hmm. at LSU, about him getting all this love and people talking about Cooper Cup and all these other receivers who have been getting theirs. Now it's his time to get his. The dude is a big playmaker. I love his chance to get a touchdown. Well, Danny, I went with a long shot here, right? Yeah. Jamison Crowder, right, last week came in the game, caught three or four targets, especially when Isaiah McKenzie had that drop that turned into an interception. Seemed like Josh Allen went to, you know, Jamison Crowder a little bit more. If Gabe Davis is out this game, I see him getting a little bit more targets. Maybe he gets that target that Isaiah McKenzie got in the red zone. So plus 285, if it hits, it's big for you, Jamison Crowder. All right, player touchdown props there. How about a player prop? In, in one of these two games tonight that you think is definitely going over, Danny? I, I might be biased on this one, my former Florida State Seminole. I'm going <laughs> Dalvin Cook. I still think he's one of the best running backs in the NFL when he's healthy. 70 and a half yards is pretty low total in my mind, especially Kevin O'Connell was brought in there to instill confidence in Kirk Cousins, mm. and he knows the best friend he can give to Kirk Cousins is a run game, and it's always been the case for the Minnesota Vikings, but I think there's even more of a commitment there to get the ball to Dalvin Cook. You could see half of this scooped up on one play, too, because he's got that breakaway speed, so I like Dalvin Cook going over his rushing total. Yeah, I'm going back to my man Jalen Hurts, over 49 and a half rushing yards. If you look at what he did last year, eight of the 15 games he played in, he went over 50 yards. In week one versus the Detroit Lions, went over 90 yards rushing. This is a guy that's really instilled into the offense. You hear teams talk about quarterback run. He's a part of this run game. I'd like him to go over 49 and a half today, rushing yards. Okay, now under. Who are you fading? You fading the big guy? You fading, Derrick Henry? I hate to do this, <laughs> but I, you know what I haven't seen since he's back healthy? Is him go over this number, 87 and a half yards. Week one, he was held to 82 against this defense. I think in, yeah. you know, in Buffalo, they're going to try to force Tannehill to beat him, right. and I think they're going to see a lot of bodies. And even though Derrick uh, Henry is a monster, 
it's only so much the human body can take, and it's going to probably take, you know, nine defenders of the Bills to stop him. But that might be what they dedicate to shutting him down. So until I see him back, able to carry that full workload the way he used to, I'm going to go ahead and take the under. Yeah, the thing about it, they were stopping him last year. Then he had that one big run that kind of yeah. skewed his average. So, you know, with Derrick Henry, it's three yards here, four yards, and then it's a 60-yarder. I'm going to go with the other running back, 16 and a half rush attempts. I believe that the Minnesota Vikings will be down in this game. I think they're going to have to pass the ball a lot. I don't think Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook gets 16 and a half rushes. Last week, I believe he had 20 attempts, but they were up in that game, right? So I think this week he'll stay under the 16 and a half attempts rushing the ball. All right, Once let's pick the one game. One of those ones are big runs, I Tonight, hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need him to carry the ball exactly. a lot. Yeah. Just get the yardage on one or two plays. Yep. All right, Titans and Bills. Buffalo has revenge on its mind. Josh Allen stuffed near the goal line to end the game last year. They lost the year before in a, in a weird COVID game on a Tuesday where they had to play it. Bills favored by 10 points in this game. Uh that's too many points. Now. That's a lot of points. Ten points. And you talked about it, Chris. Like last year, this game came down to the wire. I believe, the wire. I believe Jeffrey Simmons made a hell of a play on fourth and one on a quarterback sneak. I think the Bills will win this game, but I think the Titans cover. If you look at the Titans defense, they match up pretty well, especially if Gabe Davis is out. I mean, Christian Fulton on the outside is a really good player. To me, Kevin Bayard is the be- one of the best safeties in all of football. But up front, I think this is where the game could be won for the Titans or maybe keep the game close where they cover the 10 points. Jeffrey uh, Simmons is a man amongst boy- boys. Two sacks last week in that game versus the Giants. Was Had a sack the year before versus the Buffalo Bills. And then also, Danico Autry and Bud Dupree, these are really good players. Now, they will miss Harold Landry on the outside because, I mean, that dude had 12 sacks last year. It's hard to replace that. But I think, you know, this defense will keep this game close. They'll run the ball on offense. I think they cover the 10 points. I'm with you. Uh, this is like, you know, a college football spread when you see the double digits. If it was a single digit, if it wasn't even nine and a half, I'd think about taking the Bills. I think it'll be that close. But if it's double digits, I think the better, smarter money is on the Tennessee Titans here in this situation especially the mental aspect of the way things work, the ebbs and flows of the NFL. Titans coming off a rough performance. They need, there's a little more desperation yep. to them. Everybody's been basically giving Josh Allen the MVP, giving them the Super Bowl trophy. They've been told how great they are. Right. Every week you have to ramp up the energy, the intensity the same way. If there's a letdown at all, Tennessee will keep this game close. So I like them with the 10 points. Okay, 7:15 Eastern time kickoff there. 8:30 Eastern time kickoff for the other game. Eagles hosting the Vikings in Philadelphia, given two and a half at home. So I actually, I, I'm captain of the Kirk Cousins fan club. I love my guy, but the numbers aren't great in prime time. No, and until not. I see him bump that trend, I'm going to go ahead and take the Eagles here, uh, laying the two and a half. It's a short number. I like them to win this game, control the line of scrimmage. We talked about Davin Cook trying to run the football. Vikings coming off an impressive performance, but I'll be surprised if they go in tonight. I think the Eagles will control this game from start to finish. Yeah, I'm with you, Danny. Minus two and a half. Take the Eagles uh, with the points. I believe they cover those two and a half. Kirk Cousins, you said it. Two and nine in primetime games. And I believe those two wins were versus the Chicago Bears. Nothing against the Chicago Bears, but this is the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, the Green Bay Packers actually ran the ball really well versus this Vikings team last week. They just went away from it way too early. They averaged six yards a carry. We know the Philadelphia Eagles are going to come in and run that football, whether it's with Miles Sanders or the quarterback Jalen Hurts. I just believe they cover at home. Again, Kirk Cousins, until he shows us something else in prime time, I believe the Eagles minus two and a half. You should take it. Leger Doosable, Danny Cannell giving us picks and props for the two Monday night football games tonight. Let's recap it. Take a screenshot. This is what they like. First touchdown scores, anytime touchdown scores. Danny did give you some value on Burks. He's 20 to 1 to be the first touchdown scorer in that Tennessee Buffalo game. They are both on Jalen Hurts to be the first touchdown scorer in that Vikings Eagles game. Remember, as a quarterback, it's got to be a run. Can't be a pass. A run into the end zone there gets you around 6 to 1 on that. Both on the Titans plus 10, both on the Eagles minus 2.5. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.